Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to see how we can extract results from YOLO V8. So after we have done inference, we actually just get a results generator back. In this video here, we're going to see how we can extract all the bounding boxes, the mass, the probabilities, the path to the image, the original image and so on. So let's now start inside the Ultra Analytics YOLO V8 documentation. First of all, we'll go over to the mode and now we go down to our prediction. Inside of our prediction, we can just scroll down to our working with results. But first of all, we need to set up our model. In the previous videos, we covered like how to do object detection, segmentation, um, tracking, post estimation, and so on. Definitely check those videos out. So let's just jump straight down to the working with results section. So we have this results object that is actually returned from our model when we're doing inference. We can also go in and extract all the attributes from that object. So first of all here, we go through the documentation, then I'm going to show you how to do it in code, and then we will see the results, so we can use this in our own application and project. So first of all here, we have the results.boxes, and this is how to actually get the boundary boxes of the object that we're detecting. So we can also go in and extract the mask, so we just call results.mask, the key points for post estimation. We can also go in and get the probabilities, which is basically just the class probabilities for all the objects that we're detecting, whether it's um, segmentation, boundary boxes or barely just key points, then we can filter those ourselves based on a confidence score if you don't want to use like the model arguments that we have with YOLO V8. So the results object actually contains a tensor from PyTorch, which is actually like really easy to use. So here we can see some of the results. So either if you're running it on the GPU or the CPU, you need, you need to convert it back to the CPU if you're running it on the GPU, because then all the results will be on the GPU. And so I like being able to manipulate it and use it in your own project and application, we need to convert it to the CPU so we can display the results or like do whatever we want with it. So here we see that we can call .cuda if we want to have it on the GPU. We can also call .cpu if we want to convert it to the CPU. So you can also see here we have the bounding boxes, how we can extract those, the mask, and then we can call these individual attributes on all the different kind of like properties or all the individual classes. So we'll have the bounding boxes, we can get the X, Y for the top left corner and the bottom right corner. We can also have the normalized co coordinates, we can get the confidence scores, the classes, and also just the raw tensor data. For the mask, we can get the individual points in our segmentation mask. Also for the key points, we can get the individual key points in the detected parts of our body and also the probabilities. So here we can basically just get the top one and also the top five indices and scores when we're doing classification. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Let's just jump straight into it and see how we can actually work with it in our own custom file script. So we're gonna jump straight into Visual Studio Code and I've created this custom object detection class where we're going to extract all the results. So we have this object detection class. First of all, we set up the capture index if we want to run it on a live webcam. We use CUDA if it's available or else we'll just use the CPU. Then we load the model, we create an instance of the YOLO model, we're going to use the medium model for object detection in this example. And then we have our predict function, which is basically just throwing our function through our model. Uh, through our model. Then we get the results, return that, and then we can directly throw that into our plot bounding boxes function. And this is where I'm going to show you how we can distract the detections for our classes that we're detecting and the objects that we're detecting. So first of all here, let's just work with the boundary box. Let's see how we can convert that. So we have the results. So from our results, we just have a follow loop running through all of our detections. Then we have our bounding boxes and our bounding boxes in this example here will be equal to our results. And then we also actually have our result here. We take the first one, we, we take the bounding boxes and then we also just convert it back to CPU and a NumPy array so we can work with that. First of all here, let's just print the boxes so we can actually see the format. So I'm just going to run the application here. We are going to take a webcam and then I'm just going to show you what the output will be. And then we're just going to work on that. So this is just to show you guys. So now we get the out X, Y, X, Y, H, N, and also for the normalized coordinates. So this is the bounding boxes around on our objects. Right now we're not printing anything or we're not visualizing anything because right now we're just extracting results. We're not using the Autolytics framework to act like plot our and to visualize our results. So here we see we get our X, Y and width and height. And we also get our XY and XY, depends on if you just want to get the top left corner and then get the width and the height of our bounding box or the axe like coordinates. So let's go ahead and extract the axe like coordinates here. We can then just call our boxes. So we have our XY, XY, and that will be equal to our boxes. Then on our boxes, we can take the attribute XY, XY, and we should be able to print our XY and XY. Let's do that and just show you guys that this is act like how we can access these attributes. So right now we should get some bounding boxes out. There we go, let's just terminate this program. Let's go up. 
Here we see that we're detecting one person, one TV, one laptop, and two keyboards. So that will be five bounding boxes that we need. And this is also the results that we get. Okay, so this returns a list of all the boundary boxes that we have. So let's just call this X, Y's and X, Y's. Then we can have a for loop running through all of our X, I's and X, I's. We can either append them to some list if we want to display those lists later on or just collect all the results, store them in a JSON file, CSV file or whatever. But in this example here, let's just draw a rectangle as our boundary box. So basically just going to loop through all the boundary boxes in our detections and then draw a rectangle around them on our frame. We're going to return the frame and now we should be able to run our program. And this is actually like how you can use the results and also just do whatever you want with the results. Here we can see that we're taking keyboards, my hand, the TV monitors and so on. Right now we're just drawing the bounding boxes. We get some pretty nice results. In this example here, we just extract the results to go in and visualize it, but you can use it to control your other applications, create some logic around it and also create your machine learning and AI projects for this. So now if you want to extract the results and don't want to plot the boundary box yourself, you just want to use the results for your own application and project. So now right now we can just delete this part here. This is basically just to extract it. We can also just go in and append it to our um, list and then return those lists from our function, use them for whatever we want to do with that after that. So the, here we basically just have append. And then we can just append our boxes.xyxy and we can do that, do the exact same thing for all the other ones. So it could be like for our confidences and also for our class IDs. So let's just do that. We just have our confidences. So that will just be our bounding boxes. So boxes.conf, that will be our confidence. And then we can do it for the last as well. So that will be our class IDs dot append box dot classes. So that will just be CLS. Now we have the classes and then we can go down and return these lists as well. Use them for whatever in our own project and application. So right now, if you don't want to do the plotting, we can also just go in and directly call the plot function um, from our results. So basically, if we just go in and take our results, so we just have these results, it's just going to take grab that one. So that will be our results. Take the served element of that. And then we can just call this plot method directly on it. And then we should be able to see our results. So yeah, here we can just have our plot function and then we can return this instead of our frame. So instead of doing the plotting ourselves, we will then have our results and then just directly plot on that. Let's run it and see the visualizations together with returning the list. There we go. Our program is not running. Let's take it up. Here we see we get all the results together with returning all the list with all the results extracted. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you learned a ton and that you can use this in your own projects and applications. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye for now.